Spirit has put it on my heart to speak about pressing in. It's time to press in. The new year is coming and we need to press into the presence of God. Anything else apart from Jesus that I'm gazing upon will keep me stagnant. And anything else apart from Jesus Christ and me pushing towards having a deeper intimate relationship with him is gonna slow me down and it's also gonna be my stumbling block. We need to be getting into the word of God because the Bible says deep calls onto deep. The Bible does not say deep calls onto shallow. Deep does not call on to shallow. You understand that in the word, you read about how the seed that landed on the shallow ground that was not firmly rooted was quickly, quickly just pecked away by birds, blew away. It had no root. Deep calls on to deep. God is looking for people who are going to get deep in the word, who are going to take his seed, he's going to take his word, he's going to take his daily bread and they're going to eat it and they're going to eat it and they're going to sow that word in their souls until it becomes a reality and is birthed through their lives. Deep calls on to deep. The deeper you go, the more you're going to hear his call, the more you're going to hear his voice, the more you are going to hear Jesus Christ speaking to you through his Holy Spirit. You see these people, their relationship with God is shallow and therefore they continually backslide. They continually do not listen to the counsel that you give them because it's shallow but deep is calling on to deep. God is calling on to the deep. God is calling on to the deep ones, the ones who are going to be firmly rooted and grounded, the ones who are going to be saturated in his word. God's calling you. God's calling on to those ones. So you want to hear the voice of God? I'm telling you, go deep, go deeper. People say, I can't hear the voice of God. Go deeper worship more, spend more time with him, meditate on his word because deep calls on to deep. Now we are called to be worshippers every day, every second of our lives because we are temples of the Holy Ghost. We're called to be living sacrifices. Our lives are meant to be a worship offering unto the Lord. However, what I'm specifically talking about now is also worship in the secret place. Worship in your alone time, in your prayer closet. Worship is amazing. Worship when you worship the living Lord and you press into his presence, you push into his heart, you push into his mind. I was reading Genesis 15 the other day and it was so beautiful. Abraham was complaining about his life. He was complaining about the fact that God had blessed him so much. But unfortunately, he was still sad because he did not have a son. He did not have a son. And God literally just looks at us when we're complaining in that same way and he just he just looked at him let me i'll read it to you now god said to abraham he said do not be afraid abraham for i will protect you and your reward will be great and abraham was just complaining he you know he just didn't really believe it like you know and this is how a lot of us feel we read the word of god and we're just like god you say this about me you say this about me but really and truly it doesn't really match up to my life my life doesn't look like this and to be honest there's stuff in my heart which i really desire and i really feel like i'm praying towards it and you cannot hear me now this is what it is when our mind is unrenewed we're inside of our thoughts crippled by them and most of the time choked up by them we overthink and when we're not in intimacy with God and in his mind we begin to think that God doesn't care about us the flesh this flesh that we have it is at real true enmity against the Jesus Christ that we are serving it is at, it is just it loves to think the worst it loves to think that God hates us you know it loves to think that if I don't feel a tingle and if I don't feel a little bit of jiggle jiggle from the holy spirit and tears then he doesn't love me just how wicked is this flesh of ours and this is why we need to renew it and we need to step into the mind of christ and the way that you do that is through worship now i'm telling you god is so intelligent he told abraham to come outside so that he could show him the stars in the sky he could show him how many children how much seed he is going to produce from this one man see God physically told Abraham to step outside. 
But spiritually, if you really look at this verse, what God was really asking Abraham to do was to step out of his mind, to step out of his thinking and his processes, to step into the mind of Christ. You see a physical demonstration of the mind being renewed through this verse because God was taking Abraham out of his mind that does not comprehend the ways of God, that is unrenewed and is so, so at war with God and was taking him into a place where human reasoning just could not occur. He was taking him into his mind mind and he showed him the stars and he said look to these stars and he said look these are the innumerable amount of of sons that I'm going to show you that I'm going to produce through you and so Abraham looked and he saw and this is such a beautiful reflection of Psalm 139 in which the Bible says that he knew my substance yet being unformed so God took Abraham into his perspective that's what God was doing. As he looked at the stars, he saw the sons and the daughters that he would have, yet still being unformed. He showed Abraham the children that he would be having. And Abraham had faith to believe. And I love it because God sees the end from the beginning. Even when there's nothing going on, God doesn't look by sight. You know, he doesn't see it like that. God sees the end from the beginning. God's like, bruh, all of your sons and daughters are here. I can see them already. I've already established them in my mind. Yet being unformed in the natural, they are already here in substance. I can see it. And you now have to step into my perspective so that you can see the glory that I have in plan for you. It was only when he stepped outside that he could now see the glorious promise that God had for him. He could realign his focus. He increased in his faith. He increased in his right, in his responsibility. Do you not want that? When you press into the presence of the living God in worship, God realigns your focus. God takes you to a place where you no longer are thinking in your thoughts because your mind is so not like God that he has to actually take you and renew you by bringing you into his own. That's amazing. He now has to bring you into his own. And this is what he did with Abraham. And Abraham was counted righteous because he now had faith in God. And there's so much that we reap when we go into that place of worship. My goodness, I've seen many times in which I myself have felt like a wreck. I've gone into worship and my entire countenance has completely changed. There have been times when I've been completely hopeless and thought that I cannot achieve the visions and plans and purposes that I want to achieve. But I went into the presence. I pressed into the presence. And when I pressed into the presence, I came out feeling like like a victor I came out believing and hearing the voice of God who told me that I have not forsaken you we're gonna have to press into the presence you see God told Abraham this great and mighty vision for his life you know he said he would do great things for him you know Abraham when he had to renew his mind by stepping into God's but God then said to him because Abraham was like okay so a house is gonna be done next step God said to him you know, to get sacrifices. That's, that's, that's what Abraham had to do. He had to go and get sacrifices. What is your sacrifice? What is your sacrifice? You know, how, how zealously do you guard your sacrifice? The Bible says that Abraham, he brought out sacrifices unto the Lord. And when the vultures came to sweep down and grab the sacrifices, he would swoop this away. How hard do you guard your worship? How hard do you guard your study of the word? How hard, how zealously do you guard it? Because I need to keep this precious. I need to keep going in. Ain't nothing going to stop me from worshiping my God. Ain't nothing going to stop me from pressing into his presence. Ain't nothing going to stop me from going into the presence of the living God and reaping from it and seeing my father face to face and beholding him. When Abraham had the sacrifices and when Abraham had fended off all the vultures who tried to get into the sacrifice that Abraham had laid before the father, the Bible says, Abraham saw a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch pass between the halves of the carcasses. So who was that? God. He sent his fire. He sent his fire onto his people. Abraham didn't have to stand there and start lighting some matchsticks. 
No, God's fire came down on that sacrifice. And when God sees that sacrifice and when God sees you pressing into the presence of the living God, you understand that he brings the fire. You know, everyone sings that song, you provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice. That's literally what it is. You sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your pride, you sacrifice it and you push into that place and God will ignite and he will send the fire and you will be on fire for God. You know, I've read I read the Bible when the apostles spoke about how they had, they had heard, they had heard, they had seen, they had beheld and they had handled the word of God and I said hallelujah, they had handled, do you know how tangibly they experienced who Jesus Christ was, can you say that? Can you say that? And you cannot say that unless you guard your worship, you guard your time that you spend with God zealously, you guard that sacrifice because God sees it and you guard it and you say, no, I'm not going to do this until I have pressed into the presence of God. I have seen his face this morning. I have seen him in my secret place when I worship, when I spend time with him, when I encounter him in that place. I have seen my father this morning and now we are walking out out his glory as he possesses me and walks through me all through today can you say that we need to press in so my encouragement for all of you is to press into God's presence like never before I see so many people saying that this year their relationship with Jesus Christ is going to be lit you want it to be lit you go into your secret place and you worship God and he will make it lit he will light it he will actually light it <laughs> genuinely what you're saying is biblical so <laughs> yeah um i just pray that you have an amazing new year i pray that every single goal every single desire that you want is fulfilled in jesus name i pray that you do not become discouraged but you pray you fast you sacrifice and you spend your time with god and see how he transforms your life because he's transformed mine so much bye